Hello and welcome to Unstitches. Some of you may have seen this machine briefly in a previous video, the one I did on the auction that I went to recently, and I picked up this uh, hexagon machine here. So today I want to basically just go through and assess the machine. I'm not going to go through and do any restoration or anything like that. We'll see if the machine sews and see what needs doing to it and go from there. Some of these machines in the Bentwood case here, likes of this one and uh, the Singer machines, uh, if you don't have a key, you can quite often get away with using a flat-headed screwdriver. And just uh, pop the screwdriver in until it locates in the slot there. And turn it one way. Uh, that's clockwise for unlock on this one. Uh, it might be different for different uh, types of machines. But that uh, unlocked the lid there. As you might be able to see, it's a little bit dusty on the top there. I would like to um, maybe clean up the case here and make it all nice and uh, shiny and clean. Now this is pretty much as I got it from the auction. I've done absolutely nothing to the machine at this stage. Just caught my eye this machine. It's a very nice uh, design on the, on the base here. Let's get you in for a closer look in a second. It's in reasonably good condition. It's not perfect. A little bit of rust, surface rust here, a little bit of surface rust here. As I say, I'm not going to go uh, too crazy today cleaning it up and uh, restoring it. Uh, there's one thing I can see here. The hinge pin here is jammed out of position there, sticking up above the case. That should locate into a little uh, hole in the back there. So that needs sorting out. Now I did make sure that when I was uh, looking at these machines for purchase that they had the shuttle uh, in them and this one does have the shuttle in there so uh, you know and it uh, I just checked that they they turned and they weren't too seized up I think a couple of them were seized up it's no huge deal to deal with that just get you in for a closer look at the state of the machine here it's dusty dirty the decals are in pretty good condition. Uh, there's the surface rust on the slide plate there. Apparently the Singer, uh, is it the 28 model? I'm not 100% sure, but the slide plates are interchangeable. I wonder whether this is um, based on a Singer machine. It, it looks like it is, but I'm not 100% sure. I haven't really looked into the history of the machine too much. Uh, but yep, decals not too bad, little uh, patch missing there. If we have a look on the arm of the machine here, it's on the back there, not looking too bad. Faceplate, quite a nice uh, faceplate with the hexagonal design there. Very nice. Now we've come around the front. Nice little designs up on the belt cover there and on the hand crank there. So the emblem in the middle here, you've got the hexagon design here and the letters H, that'll be for hexagon. And apparently from what I can read online, this was made by a company called Standard Sewing Machine Company. And we've, so we've got an S here for uh, standard and maybe sewing as well uh, because I can't see any other S there uh, just the one S so uh, and then M will be machine and C for company there it's a nice little emblem there the decal on the inner arm there is quite nice I think this should clean up quite nicely actually uh, it's just a matter of getting some of this old uh, gunk off there you can see on the end of my finger there, I just gave it a wee scrape. There's a little bit of uh, something like a film on top of that. I don't think it's the uh, lacquer layer or anything like that. I can't see any lacquer coming off of this machine. Reversing lever, stitch length, uh, that's the stitch length limiter there. The stopper here can be adjusted. That feels a little bit tight, not too bad. Everything else feels in reasonable order there. That's the hand crank there. We'll just engage that. 
and yep, seems to be turning over quite nicely there. I'll go through and give it an oil. So first of all, I would like to fix this hinge issue here. Um, if we slide the little latch back here, we should be able to tip the machine back. Of course I don't want to damage it. Let's see whether I can get this pin in here. So there's just a hole in the back there. Should be able to get that on there, hopefully. Mm, might have to. It's just a. It's just a little bit awkward because the other hinge is holding it. There we go. If I get it parallel there, just slip that back into there like that. Also, our bag of accessories here. We'll have a look at us in a second. So that's the, the hinge sorted there, and then you can actually uh, tighten the, there should be a couple of screws up in here, that one's missing. There's another screw over here, I think is missing as well. This is the shuttle over this area here, be able to see that in action here. Yeah, the whole design of it is very singer-like, so I wonder if it's a copy. Okay, accessories that came with it. Uh, that looks like a guide, I mean, a little bit rusty, isn't it? That looks like a guide for some a ribbon or something like that, elastic maybe. Come through for, maybe for the ruffler or something like that. These almost look like Singer accessories, but did they just copy Singer outright? I don't know. That's a cute little screwdriver. I haven't seen one like that before, a little small screwdriver. Uh, what have we got here? That's the ruffler. It's a little uh, seam guide there. Hemo foot. Quite rusty, needs a good clean. That will be the uh, the marking guide, is it? That I think you use with this here. And so while you're sewing, it will mark uh, with this here. It'll mark the fabric for your next line of sewing. So that will stick out, as far as I know, that will stick out the side there. Oh, that clamp, that gets clamped by this here. But yeah, that's an adjustable seam guide of some sort there. And as the needle goes up and down, this pushes down and marks over here. So that it marks the next uh, seam line for you. Uh, yep, so have a look here. We've got some spare bobbins there, a hemming, another hemming foot, and that is a, is that a ruffling or, yeah, is that ruffling or shearing foot, yeah, not too sure about that, and some more spare bobbins there, but uh, let's have a go at winding a bobbin, eh, and we'll thread her up and see if she sews. Before we do that though, let's start by oiling the machine. Uh, we'll start over here on the hand crank side here. Generally there's a, a hole for oiling in here. Just a drop of oil there. And there'll also be another one uh, just here on the, on the hand cranker there. I like to give these, these an oil up as well here. These hinge points here. There's a little keeper there. And then the other thing to do is to disengage the stop motion there. Oh yep, that's nice and free. But that's that's good there. So we'll just tighten that back up again. 
couple of oil points here. One there, one there. I would say that's one. One there. Uh, I'll get one on the. There's another oil point down in here. Not sure if you can see that. Just here. Get that on there. Also on the hinge down there. Just see if I can free that up. Oh, that's that's getting better already. And then just a couple more oil points here. Let's take the faceplate off here, see what's in behind here. I do like the design on the faceplate there. It's looking pretty clean in there actually. It doesn't really need much of a clean at all. Uh, so the oil points in here, uh, the important ones are the needle bar bearings there, top and bottom. Same with the foot bar. I uh, tend to lubricate the uh, foot lifter lever there, just where it hinges. Also maybe where it uh, lifts the foot here, just on that surface there. Just in there. Yeah, there's another uh, runner just in here too. You can see the needle bar, as the needle bar goes up and down, it runs on this surface here, so I would uh, give that a bit of oil as well. I'll just get a bit down the back there for that hinge, as I said. Uh, the the take-up mechanism is oiled already on these top spots I did before. So that's looking pretty good there. Just get a little bit more in there. Okay. Face plate back on there. I would say, looking at this, the machine has had a little bit of use. I wouldn't think it's had too much. Uh, a general telltale sign is the decals here. If they're not worn there, it's a pretty good sign that it's not had a lot of use. If, sometimes these will wear right off around this area. Okay, let's oil the underside mechanisms here. Just either side of the feed bar mechanisms there. There's a little roller down in here that uh, travels on a, a cam here. Let's give that an oil. These bearing points over here. The one under here. Just anything that moves really. Uh, the race needs a little bit of oil. That's where the shuttle travels along the race here. And that looks like, oh there's a big oil point here for this main bearing, this main bearing here. Get quite a bit of oil into that. Okay, just give it a good splash of oil there. Can't really do too much damage with um, oil on a machine like this that doesn't have a motor. Okay, that's looking pretty good there. Let's give the bobbin winder an oil there, one there, just on the little cam follower there, just on this little hinge, that hinge point there, a little bit on the, the worm gear there as well. Freeing up nicely there, just on there as well. That one there, both sides are there. It's a little retainer for the bobbin. You can see where the the slide plate here has been catching on the little on this wooden casing here. Let's get you a closer look there. You can see there. It's just been catching on the side there. Nothing too major. That comes right out. I just take the presser foot off there. That. Get the throat plate off. And see how dirty it is under here. 
Yeah, a little bit of lint there. There's the plate there. Tiny bit of lint, not too bad. I wonder how old that lint is. <laughs> I'm not even sure how old the machine is, to be honest. As I say, I haven't really put much research into the machine at all. Uh, I've got a feeling it's about 19... Uh, 19 or somewhere around there just a quick look online uh, but I'm not 100% sure if anyone knows for sure uh, if you wouldn't mind leaving a comment down below that would be greatly appreciated now the quite often these backslides seize up which this one has Let's see if I can oh yeah yep that got it yeah, they get uh, quite tight in there. In fact, what I like to do when I do get them out is I like to just carefully, you know, go down the channels with a, a screwdriver, and you can see a bit of gunk coming out of out of them. You see a little bit of uh, gunk there that can uh, impede the free sliding of the slider plate there just give that a quick quick clean up there give that a little brush off there and just a drop of oil each end there each side it's it's better it probably needs a little bit more of a clean but i'll leave that at this stage we can release the shuttle with this little lever here pushes the shuttle up at the back there we can just remove that and there's the shuttle there it's all present and accounted for with the look of that a little bobbin so I'll show you how to thread that once we uh, wind another bobbin here, we'll wind a fresh one. So I'll disengage the stop motion there. Okay. It's also treadle capable. We can see the there's a V-belt groove here to accommodate a leather belt for a treadle machine. And okay, so uh, let's place a, a bobbin in the holder there. Just a full spring loaded mechanism there. So the right hand side locates into the spindle there, likewise with the left side there. That's all set to go, and then we engage by bringing the Bob and winder rubber against the hand wheel there. Just make sure that's driving. Yep, that's looking good there. It's a very similar setup to a singer, isn't it? Place our thread on the spool holder there. Come over to this left hand left hand guide here, and then down to this guide at the bottom of the bobbin winder up to this top guide here and in fact I find it easier to wind the thread around the bobbin first just get a few winds onto there first of all and then reinstall the bobbin and make sure the threads heading through the guides there there and we're set to go <laughs> we'll burn a few calories here I won't fill the bobbin up completely but you can see it takes a fair amount of thread Okay, that 
that's about it there. That bob and winder rubber is a little bit worn, not too bad. Okay, and then we can remove the thread here, this bobbin. I'm going to use this bobbin here, it's got the green thread on, just so that it's a little bit easier for you to see. Uh, but the key to this is just to uh, hold the bobbin case with the pointed end uh, facing down like this. And then you drop, uh, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that the thread is coming off your bobbin. When you hold the bobbin in your left hand and you hold the thread with your right hand, the bobbin thread should be coming off the top of the bobbin like that. Okay, so that when you turn the bobbin, it's spinning in a clockwise direction as you can see it there. Okay, and then grab your bobbin case. I find that index finger used uh, for holding the bobbin in. So just grip your uh, bobbin case between your thumb and your middle finger. Uh, you might find it easier doing it other ways, but this works for me. And then um, you drop your bobbin case in the top there, making sure that the thread is coming off the top of the bobbin, like so. Just let the bobbin drop right into the bobbin case there and then thread the thread down the slot here like so pull it right down pull it right as far as it'll go right down to here okay you might need to pull it quite tight and then just bring the thread straight up now sometimes you might find that it flicks back out the slot there you don't want that you just want to make sure that it flips under, there's a little point underneath the spring here and it can be quite difficult to get the thread to flick around it and pull that down and up yeah, just like that there and then pull the thread right up so right up there and it should flick under this little spring here just here just like that Uh, if you're having trouble with that, I'll show you um, what you can do to try and help it. So as you can see, it's just about impossible to uh, hook that under there. There uh, can be a couple of causes for this, and I'll show you um, a fix, really, that I found it helps quite a bit. And it's quite a good idea to do anyway, and that's to take this spring off here and uh, give it a clean under there. Yeah, that can be really hard to get. Sometimes it just does not uh, hook in. The funny thing is I did this off camera and it worked perfectly every time, but now this might be the way that I'm angled with the camera. I don't know, but it's just not hooking under that. I'll show you what's going on in here. I'll remove the spring here. This is the tension adjustment spring, spring here. So generally, you know, uh, if you turn it anti-clockwise, it loosens the thread. If you turn it clockwise, it tightens the thread tension. But I'm just going to remove it completely, just so you can see what's going on. Okay. Just move that out of the way. You see this here, this is what's happening. Try and get you in close. So the thread needs to come along far enough to get past this point here, that little point, like that. And that comes up like that, you see. But what's happening is the thread is just getting to there. It's not quite going far enough. And then when you pull it up, it just comes back out the slot. That's what's happening there. Uh, you can see there's actually quite a bit of gunk under here. So it's actually not a bad thing to do, is take that spring off and give that a good clean under there. You can see there's quite a bit of gunk under there. Now these bobbin cases are made out of hardened steel, so they're reasonably safe just to give it a little bit of a 
a scrape here with a screwdriver to get that uh, gunk off there. I'm not going to spend a heap of time cleaning that up at this stage, but that's nice and smooth there. If we have a look underneath the spring, also, you can see there's a little bit of gunk under there as well. So it would pay just to, you know, give that a good clean. I'll just use my fingernails there. Yep, it's reasonably clean there. You can see a little bit more something here, just lint down in there. I would make sure that's clean. Give that a clean up. That there is the end of the bobbin. And I wonder if that's just trapping the thread slightly there. It's not allowing it to pop through under here maybe. Uh, let's just see if there's any gunk down in just looking down inside the bobbin case there. I guess if there was any lint or whatever down in here, uh, that's going to hold the bobbin, uh, the bobbin back, you know, away from this little point here and probably uh, cause that to be more difficult to thread. So I would just check to make sure there's nothing caught down in there. This one looks reasonably clean. Okay, we'll put this back together. Two fingers there, locate into the two slots there. And then just bring that down and screw the screw back in there. So our tension screw. Okay, and then let's try this again. So make sure that it's coming across. Hold that down, pull that in, and there we go. First time there. That's what you should see. Just like that there. Just make sure the needle's at its highest point there, and you'll see that the shuttle's at its most forward point, or close to it anyway. Okay, and then you place the bobbin case in with the tensioner spring facing up and the bobbin thread out to the right there and you just sit the point of the bobbin case in first like that and let the back end slip down like that okay let's just put that plate back on okay and we'll thread the machine now okay we've got the spool on here coming across to the this guide here and then you, from there you come straight down to the tension discs. I'll get you in for a closer look there. Okay, there's a handy tension release mechanism here. Uh, but you should be able to thread this without having to use that. Just make sure the thread here goes in between the two tension discs here. So let's pull that in there like that. So that, or oh, underneath the, make sure to go around the tension release lever there like that there and then under the check spring now this check spring here doesn't look 100% uh, for a start it's not returning it should return to this position here so there should be some spring tension there which there's just nothing okay uh, so that may affect its uh, stitch quality but I think it's, you know, it's probably okay just for a test, so uh, so I would say that uh, that would come up, you would thread it through the loop here, like that. So normally it would act like that, as a check spring there, just like that there. See it's not returning there. I'll sort that out later. So yeah, keep an eye out for more videos, I'll go through some of these little uh, fix-up jobs here and maybe the, the clean-up. Um, that probably won't take too much to sort out, I wouldn't think, hopefully. Hopefully the spring's not broken. 
um, but anyway from there you go through your take up lever from front to back there just like so just through this guide here very singer like down through this guide here this one and then just um, thread the needle there from left to right like that and then turn the machine in operating direction just one full revolution so that the take up lever goes down and back up again to its top position and that will draw the bobbin thread up there like that okay so we can pull the bobbin thread through there like so we'll put our press foot back on like that bring our threads under our foot there slide the plate on and let's see how we go stitch length too low there just increase the stitch length there oh so nicely and smoothly threads are a little bit dirty just from the oil there yep very nice oh, tensions tensions uh, not right there but that's you know, quite possibly the check spring not working properly there top there sorry I should have used contrasting thread but it's looking pretty good for a more than 100 year old machine as I say I'm not sure exactly how old it is so yep that's looking good there sewing nicely it, everything seems to work um, it needs as you can see a good clean up uh, so keep an eye out for more videos look at that it's just grime really I think it'll clean up quite nicely uh, yeah but uh, as I say I'll uh, I'd like to uh, fix the check spring here I'll show you what I do to fix that and uh, give it a clean up and I think you know once that's done it'll be quite a nice machine actually I think uh, you know, for a, as far as I know, they're reasonably rare. I, I'm not, if say, I'm not 100% sure. I haven't looked into it too much, but um, just an initial uh, look, you know, for half an hour or so online, I would say uh, looks like they're reasonably rare. Um, but yeah, it just stood out to me in the auction. I liked the hexagonal sort of design, and um, it was just a little bit different to most other things there. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed that and thank you as always to my patrons on patreon i really appreciate your help and thank you very much for watching